All right, buckle up, everybody, because today we're taking a deep dive into Dario Amade's essay, Machines of Loving Grace, How AI Could Transform the World for the Better. Oh, uh, this is a fun one. It is. Because, you know, instead of all the typical AI doomsday talks, right. Amade, he's the CEO's anthropic, you know, the right. AI safety company, he kind of flips the script mm -hmm. and really wants to explore, like, what could a really positive future with powerful AI actually look like. It really is refreshing, isn't it? You know, to see that kind of perspective shift. And he actually addresses why he hasn't really talked about the upsides that much, you know, up until now. Yeah. He doesn't want to be like, you know, a hype man or anything or downplay the risks of AI, which obviously he spent a yeah. lot of time working on. Right. But he really carefully like lays out this roadmap for a positive future, which I think is, you know, yeah. it's a much need needed kind of addition to the conversation. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, he starts by being really clear about what he means by powerful AI, which, you know, we need to all get on the same page for this. For sure. Because he doesn't just say super smart AI. Yeah. He actually has these like really specific criteria. Yeah. He really gets into the weeds there. Like he's talking about AI that, you know, surpasses Nobel Prize winners. Oh, wow. In most fields can interact with the world through like all sorts of interfaces, mm -hmm. text, audio, you know, the yeah. internet and also like work on those complex long term tasks. Yeah. But like completely autonomously. Wow. And he even envisions like millions of these AI instances Why? running at the same time, each one like 10 to 100 times faster than a human mind. Wow. That's like, I can't even imagine what that would. It's hard to even comprehend, right? Yeah. Like to even to have a conversation with something like that, it's, yeah. it's just mind boggling. But this is where it gets really interesting is he also brings up the idea of marginal returns to intelligence. I love that concept. Yeah. Because what he's basically saying is that even if you have this insanely powerful AI, yeah. you know, it's not magic. Like, there's still going to be limits to what it can actually achieve. It's kind of like having, like, a super powerful car, right? Okay. It can go really, really fast, but it's still limited by, like, the roads, the traffic laws, and ultimately, you know, right. the laws of physics. Yeah. You know? So... Emma is pointing out that even with this like brilliant AI, yeah. there's factors like the speed of the physical world, the availability of data, you know, the brilliant. inherent complexity of some problems, and then obviously, you know, us, human <laughs> limitations, yeah. laws and regulations and stuff like that. Right, right. So like it's not just about like raw intelligence, it's about this like complex interplay between what the AI can do and and like the world that it's in. Yeah, it's 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 that dance between like what's theoretically possible and then what actually plays out in reality. Yeah. And and that's really fascinating. Like um let me give you like a concrete example. Imagine we were using AI to like, you know, design a new bridge or something. Yep. You know, AI could come up with all these incredible designs in seconds, like optimizing for strength and cost and like, you know, aesthetics. Right. But we would still need humans right it, yeah. to actually gather the materials mm -hmm. operate the equipment navigate the the permits and all that stuff so the ai could like totally speed up the process but it's not gonna like magically right. make a bridge appear overnight right yeah that's yeah. a really good point and that kind of makes you wonder like what, what are the areas where those marginal returns to intelligence are really high mm. Like, where can AI really make the biggest difference yeah well m a argues that one area is um biology and healthcare. Oh, yeah. Like, you know, when I was reading this section, yeah. I really felt like I was like getting a glimpse into this future that's like straight out of science fiction. Right. Like we're talking curing infectious diseases, yeah. conquering cancer, eliminating genetic disorders and, yeah. and, and maybe even like doubling human lifespans. It's hard to even fathom that. It's it's almost hard to wrap your mind around. Yeah. It is. It's just incredible. Yeah. And, and he kind of backs up that optimism by talking about how AI could like fundamentally change the way we even do science. Oh, absolutely. Like he's not just talking about AI that analyzes data, you know? All right. He's talking about AI that designs experiments, yeah. that invents new tools and like even guides researchers. Wow. You know, so it's it's almost like having this like superpower Yeah, like a research partner. A research partner, yeah. Yeah, who's yeah. like working 24/7 like Exactly. generating hypotheses, analyzing all this data mm -hmm. and like 
pointing us in the right direction. Yeah, and he actually uses this term. He's like the compressed 21st century to to describe this like oh, the potential we... acceleration of scientific progress. Yeah. <laughs> Which is wild. Like he's basically saying we can see like 50 to 100 years worth of advancements uh, wow. packed into like 5 or 10 years. That's incredible. And like you know you think about that kind of rapid progress and it makes you wonder, like, what would be the ripple effect across society? Oh, for sure. I mean, just think about, like, okay, so let's say we suddenly had cures for, like, you know, cancer and Alzheimer's. Right. How would our healthcare systems have to, like, adapt to that? How would our understanding of aging and mortality change? Yeah. Would we need to, like, totally rethink our education systems, oh. our career paths, if people are living, like significantly longer longer and healthier lives and healthier lives yeah yeah it's just mind-blowing to think about the the ripple effects of that totally but let's like zoom back in a little bit to like the science itself yeah. you know like what are some like concrete examples of how ai could actually accelerate these like you know these biological breakthroughs yeah well he he points to um you know discoveries like crispr and and mRNA vaccines as yeah. like, you know, examples of things that like could have come years earlier with AI, you know, like those were already huge breakthroughs. Right. But just imagine like how much faster they could have been developed if we had AI helping us analyze these massive data sets. Right. Identifying like the promising avenues of research right. and even like predicting the outcomes of experiments. Wow. Before we even conduct them. Like having a crystal ball. It's kind of like having a crystal ball for scientific discovery. Yeah. And, and it's not just, you know, like you said, like speeding up the research we're already doing. Right. But like unlocking these completely new possibilities. Exactly. Yeah. Like he suggests that AI could like help us, you know, prevent and treat almost all infectious diseases. Oh, wow. Eliminate most cancers. Right. Cure genetic diseases. Wow. And like, you know, he even talks about achieving this like level of of biological understanding that like we can barely imagine today. Wow. You know, he he talks about the potential for like biological freedom yeah. where like we have greater control over our physical attributes or reproductive choices, you know, even, yep. even like aspects of aging. I mean, which obviously that raises some some questions, right? Yeah, that's a lot of like, what does it even mean to have that level of control over our own biology? Yeah. And like, where's that line between therapy and enhancement? For sure. And he acknowledges that, like, you know, these advancements are going to come with sure. ethical and societal considerations that we we really have to think about. Yeah. But the potential benefits are so profound that, like, it's worth, you know, right. exploring these questions really deeply. Absolutely. And, and, you know, he doesn't just stop at, like, you know, physical health. Right. He actually believes that AI can also revolutionize like neuroscience and mental well-being as well. Oh, yeah. Like he, he sees AI as a key to unlocking the mysteries of the human brain. You know, and, yeah. and addressing this this whole range of like mental health challenges. Right. He actually lays out these four like main pathways for AI to like accelerate progress in neuroscience, mm -hmm. which I, I thought was really interesting. Yeah. Um, you know, one was through like traditional molecular biology and genetics, mm -hmm. where you know AI can help us decipher this like you know, complex interplay between our genes and, and the proteins that, that underlie brain function. Yeah, like all that stuff that's going on in there yeah. that we don't fully understand. Yeah, it's so complex. <laughs> um, another one was, you know, developing these really precise, like, neural measurement and, and intervention tools. Oh, that's exciting. You know, like, imagine <laughs> imagine being able to, like, observe and, and manipulate, like, individual neurons with, like, incredible precision. It's like having a microscope for the mind. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then and then he talks about this, like, really fascinating field of, like, computational neuroscience. Oh, yeah. Where AI can be used to, like, create these simulations of the brain mm -hmm. and, like, you know, test out different theories of how it actually works. Right. Which, like, you know, could lead to these major breakthroughs in our understanding of, like, cognition and emotion and, and even consciousness. It's almost like, like, using AI to unlock the secrets of AI. Right. Except the AI we're studying is our own brain. <laughs> right. That's that's such an interesting loop. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then finally, you know, he talked about the potential for, like, AI-powered, like, behavioral interventions. Mm -hmm. oh, I love that. 
Yeah, like imagine having like a, a personalized AI coach. Yeah. That that helps you like regulate your emotions, improve your focus, and like generally become like the best version of yourself. Yeah. It's it's like having like, you know, a therapist and a mindfulness coach and a personal trainer. All rolled into one. All rolled into one, yeah. Wow. And and he even goes so far as to suggest that, you know, AI could help us raise the baseline of human experience. No, what does that even mean? Like you know, think about those moments in your life when you've like felt this like deep sense of like clarity or connection mm -hmm. or like inspiration. Right. What if AI could help us like access those states more right. readily oh, yeah. and like integrate them into our, our daily lives? So we're not just talking about like fixing what's broken. We're talking about like enhancing yeah. what it means to be human. Yeah. It's it's. It's it's a really powerful idea. It is. And it and it raises these like profound questions about like the nature of consciousness and and like the potential of technology to to shape our inner lives. Yeah, it's a lot to take in, but it's also really exciting to yeah, think right? about the possibilities. Absolutely. But you know, while all these advancements in health and, and neuroscience are like incredibly promising, you know, he doesn't he doesn't shy away from this question of like access and equity right you know he brings up this this really crucial point which is like what about the rest of the world yeah what about the rest of the world yeah you know will these benefits only be available to like the wealthy the privileged and the privileged yeah it's easy to get like swept away in all the amazing potential of all this stuff oh totally but yeah we can't forget about the whole global equity question right you know like mm. if these ai advancements are really going to make the world better yeah it can't just be for like a select few exactly yeah and he acknowledges that like this is where things get yeah. even trickier right it's not just about developing the tech it's about navigating right. all these like human factors and right. politics and like all these economic systems right so like does he have any ideas for how how we can actually approach this he does like offer some reasons to be like cautiously optimistic. Dope. Like for one, he thinks AI could completely revolutionize how we distribute healthcare interventions. Okay. You know, like potentially we could eradicate like major diseases from the planet. Okay. Like we've seen it happen with smallpox and polio, but with AI we could like scale those efforts up like exponentially. Exponentially, yeah. Wow. It's like taking those public health successes and then giving them like Yeah, like supercharging it. Supercharging. With AI. Yeah. And then he goes even further, yeah. right? He suggests that AI could be like like a super powered finance minister for developing economies. Bro, what does that even look like? Right. It's it's kind of a wild idea, uh -huh. but he he's basically talking about guiding these countries towards like much faster growth rates. Right. Like potentially 20 percent annual growth. Yeah. Driven by this combination of like oh, yeah. smart economic policy and like the rapid adoption of, you know, AI powered technology. OK, I mean, that would be incredible, but I feel like I can already hear like the skeptics in the back of my head being like, oh, yeah, that sounds great in theory. But like, what about the real world? Right. What about the people who don't trust AI or the people who can't like access this stuff because of, you know, poverty or infrastructure problems or, or whatever? Mm -hmm. You're hitting on this really important point. Like he actually calls it the opt out problem uh, okay. where like people could miss out on the benefits of AI for all sorts of reasons. Mm. Like maybe it's misinformation. Maybe they just don't trust it. Right. Maybe there's like cultural barriers. Right. Maybe they literally just don't have the resources to like, you know, access the tech. Right. It's like having the cure, but not being able to give it to the people who need it. Exactly. So, you know, he doesn't have all the answers, but he really stresses that like, you know, both AI developers and policymakers have to be really proactive about this. Like right. we have to build trust. Okay. We have to make sure it's equitable and and address people's concerns head on. Right. Like it's not just about building cool AI, it's about like building a better world alongside it. Right. Yeah, it's it's a call to action for everyone, not just the tech people. Totally. All, all of society right. really needs to be having these conversations. Yeah, absolutely. And making sure we're, you know, steering this in the right direction. Yeah. And and that kind of brings us to another crucial point he talks about, okay. which is governance and like global conflict. Oh, right, right. Because he he gets that even if we have a healthier and wealthier world, you know, right. It doesn't automatically mean it's more peaceful or democratic. Right. Yeah. AI could be used to make democracy stronger. Right. 
but it could also be used, you know, by by more authoritarian types <laughs> for like more control and repression. Right. It's it's kind of a double edged sword. It really is. And and his argument is that like you know democracies really need to be at the forefront yeah. of of AI development mm. so that authoritarian regimes don't. Right. get the upper hand right yeah. and he also suggests that ai could be this really powerful tool for like creating a more Play. you know transparent and accountable global information environment okay so like ai that can help fight propaganda yeah power like dissidents and stuff yeah yeah give people more control over their own mm -hmm. like you know data and privacy Ex that's that's a pretty big ask it is yeah but but he believes it's possible okay like he really envisions this future where ai is helping us build like you know stronger more resilient democracies you know yeah. and and promoting more global cooperation right which obviously takes a lot of work it does yeah careful planning and execution yeah but it's it's a vision worth striving for yeah absolutely absolutely and you know speaking of things worth striving for there's there's one last like big question he tackles oh yeah which is like what happens to human meaning and purpose in a world where AI can like basically do most jobs better than us. Yeah, it's like the question on everyone's mind, right? It's no. it's a natural concern and he right. totally addresses it. Okay. You know? He he says like meaning doesn't just come from like work right. or or just being like the best at something. Right. It's like right. we find fulfillment in our relationships, our hobbies, our creative pursuits, you know, right. personal challenges, like contributing to our communities. Right. It's about like, you know, recognizing the full spectrum of of what makes us human yeah, and, yeah. and, you know, finding ways to like express ourselves and, and connect with others. Exactly. And he believes that AI could actually free us up yeah. to, to pursue these things even more. More fully. Yeah. Like imagine a world where we're not just like tethered to these jobs right. that are like, you know, repetitive or unfulfilled. Right. We could have so much more time and energy to focus on like right. the things that really matter. On the things that really matter. But then, you know, that does raise the practical question of yeah. like how do we support ourselves in a world like that? Right. Totally. Yeah. He acknowledges we're going to need new economic models. Right. He mentions like UBI as one possibility. Right. Universal basic income. But he's open to other, you know, creative solutions as well. Right. We just have to start thinking about it now. Yeah. The key is to think about it now, you yeah. know, and, and start building these systems that that make sure everyone can like really thrive in this AI powered future. So, yeah, Amade's vision is like super ambitious oh for sure and like even radical at times yeah but it's it's ultimately this like really hopeful and empowering message it is you know it's yeah. it's reminding us that we actually have a say in how the future unfolds mm -hmm. and and ai could be this tool that helps us create this world that's like way better than anything we can even picture right now I think that's a great way to put it. It's 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 call to action. You know, we're not just passive passengers on this tech yeah. ride. Yeah. Like we have the power, maybe even the responsibility to, to steer it towards something good. Absolutely. Yeah. And and who knows, maybe yeah. we can actually create this future where like machines of loving grace really do make the world a better place. That would be something. It would. Well, thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Yeah, thanks for being here. We hope that, you know, Amadee's vision has, like, sparked your imagination mm -hmm. and given you all some food for thought. Yeah, and we encourage you to keep exploring these ideas and, you know, talking about them with each other. Because yeah. the choices we make now are going to shape the world of tomorrow. Yeah.